All right, everyone, today we are in Overland Bound HQ in the garage. I always say don't knock the rattle can. What do I mean by that? See those wheels? They're utilitarian. I scratch them up all the time by going off road, and so will you if you use your rig. This is my daily driver. It's got seven or eight inches of sidewall on the tire. Doesn't matter. When I go off road from time to time, if you have to decide between being safe and scratching your wheel, you're gonna scratch your wheel. <laughs> so once a year, I touch these wheels up and there are basically three parts to it. One, cleaning the wheels. Two, your prep work. And three, hitting it with some paint. You see that my wheels are all scuffed up here. It's a combination of two things. One, here, I just ran it up against a rock. I needed to, needed the angle to push forward and I ground out the paint. And then the, the second reason is bad prep work the last time I did this. And so it started to flake and peel. So prep work is really key and you can just relate the longevity of the job with the amount of prep work you do. If you don't care, if you're gonna hit it every month, then just, you don't have to do a lot of prep work to paint over dirt if you want to. If you want it to last for a little while, just spend more time on your prep work. All right, three steps, let's get started. All right. Now before we get started, I'm gonna run you through some of the supplies we're gonna to use today. And I'm also gonna give you the cost, okay? I got my cheat sheet, so I know how much it was. All right, I have no idea how much these were, but these are sanding pads, they're cheap. This is uh, indoor nine pound mounting tape. These are four bucks a piece. I'm gonna leave this a bit of a mystery right now. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna make your life easy. Disposable razor blade, right? Buck 99, if you buy them in bulk, you'll get them for cheaper. Okay, now this is a clinging plastic film. Show you how we're gonna use that. These are not, uh, $6 for that. This I have in the garage. It's a wheel scrubber for obvious reasons. And I like the Rust-Oleum. I really like the satin finish. This is black. It uh, has, has lasted quite a long time. And here's the other thing. It's really close to the ARB semi-flat finish. So it matches nice and it lasts a long time. Before we get started into prep work, we gotta get these wheels clean. So without further ado, let's get on the road. Right now I'm headed down to the local car wash where we can spray off the rig. I do that because it makes my life easier. I don't have to clean up the driveway. I just go and I get it done. Now the other thing about that is the drive on the way home whisks off all of that water and it dries the wheels. That also makes it easier for you. The other thing is I highly recommend bringing an automatic wheel washer with you. Uh, and I have done that and I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> All right, we are back in the car wash and now we have these 3M between coat finishing pads and we're going to scrub the entire wheel paying special attention to the chipped areas to make sure that it doesn't just keep chipping and here's where prep work is really going to pay off the more time you spend with this the better the finished result is going to be all right now I'm going to go ahead and let the camera roll and let you watch 20 minutes of brushing just kidding All right, now that we got that done, we're gonna go ahead and wipe these wheels down good and clean to get off all that sanding fine, fine dust. Again, so that paint is gonna stick. All right, now this is where Michael goes off the reservation. You remember that two-sided tape I was talking about? This is how we're gonna use it. have our two-sided tape on there. Now I'm getting my six dollar 
plastic film ready. We are going to expose the side of the sticky tape. Let's get some plastic around this tire. All right, when you do this next part, use a brand new blade, brand new razor blade. Now we got the tire masked off, put my valve cap back on that I didn't want to mess up and scuff up with the paint or uh, with the sandpaper and this has been warming up for about 15 minutes now get, gonna give it a good shake and then we're gonna put a few coats of paint on this thing you want to do light coats and you don't want to start your spray or end your spray while you're over the wheel I'm going to call that the first coat. All right, now I've done one coat and I did a light coat of spray. And after the first coat, you can still see the chips through the paint because you haven't covered it. The last thing you want is drips in your paint because once you get that, there's no going back. It's a mess. So do many light coats. Keep your can about 10 inches away. Don't start spraying when you're over the wheel. Start over here, keep moving smoothly, and end. That's how you do it. As you get a little bit more confidence and you start feeling, you know, how much paint you're putting on, you can get a little bit closer, you can touch up, let yourself get confident with it, and then just put many coats on it. All right, this is the third and final coat. All right, that'll just about do it. Thanks for watching. Again, this is a technique for a utility vehicle. Overlanders aren't in a world where we polish up our rims all that often, right? They're gonna get scratched, they're gonna get dinged. The whole point of this method is it's relatively inexpensive and you can do it fast, doing it maybe once or twice a year. Lots more tips like this over at overlandbound.com, so come and check it out. Also, on our forums, we have thousands of members worldwide with all kinds of experience, all different skill levels, consider coming over and saying hello. Also, if you like what you saw, subscribe. We really appreciate it. All right, until next time, outfit and explore. Three more to go.